My name is Reverend Julie Tonneson, and it is a joy to welcome y'all back to this space once again for Newman Lumen. Today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Caroline DeGrandi, who has been a staple and a constant uh, here in the Truett Center. Um, and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to have gotten to know her, but a little bit sad that she'll be graduating and leaving us in the spring. Caroline is from Warren, New Jersey, and is a major in environmental and sustainability studies and has minors in Spanish and sociology. She's passionate about studying the intersections between culture, policy, and the environment. She's also a college fellow, and through her fellows program, she's done research on how the pandemic affected waste accumulation and sustainability programs for colleges and universities across the US. She's also a former multi-faith intern and has been influential in helping to connect the Truett Center with other departments on campus, notably the Office of Sustainability. So we're grateful to Caroline, both for all of the good work you've been a part of during your time at the Truett Center um, and are pleased to welcome you to the podium this morning. Now it's a little dry. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Caroline. Thank you, Julie, for that great introduction. And thank you, Lars. That was beautiful um, for the music. Um, so I'm Caroline. I'm a senior here at Elon. Um, I've been around the Truett Center for a couple years now. So I'm really excited to be sharing my story with you all today. The theme for Newman Lumen this academic year has been me and my own words. From a student's perspective, this can seem daunting, and for me, hinting at some imposter syndrome. It assumes an answer to the very question all of my peers and I are meant to ask ourselves during our four years here and beyond. A question we all ask ourselves at different stages of our lives, it determines what we want, who we spend time with, our goals and aspirations, while those things in return can deeply influence the answer to that question too. Who am I? My parents like to tell me, you are who you surround yourself with. One thing about my dad is after 30 years of coaching football, he is simply teeming with inspirational quotes like this. But the meaning rings true. Throughout my life, the people close to me have influenced everything as small as my mood to something as significant as the way I treat others. These people have collectively created the lens through which I perceive the world around me. And I suppose my role after that has been forging my own lens from the ones through which I've been exposed. So in thinking about this question, I decided that though I may not be able to tell you exactly who I am yet or who I will be, I can share with you the people who have helped shape the version of me that stands before you today. Specifically, three important women and the lessons they've taught me on how to live life. My mom, Jean DeGrandi, is one of the hardest working women I know, and I resented her for it as a child. She wasn't like my friend's moms, who I'd see helping out at school or on afternoon serving up snacks. She would often work late and sometimes on weekends, and there would be nights when I wouldn't see her because my bedtime arrived before she did at home. Because of this, my siblings and I got to know numerous babysitters who all shared their experiences and cultures with us in cool ways that I didn't appreciate then. At the time, I couldn't look at my mom and see through the tough decisions she made to follow her career ambitions and dream for herself. She managed to cheer me on at soccer games and also win awards for her agency every year. She would also bundle my siblings and I up in hats and gloves and haul us through an hour and a half of rush hour traffic to see my dad coach football every Friday. Her entrepreneurial spirit continues to teach me to know what sells and how to go the extra mile in life and professionally. My mom taught me that becoming a mother doesn't have to mean sacrificing the life you built for yourself before your family came along. You don't have to fit into the mold if fitting in means giving up what you've worked for. For this reason and many more, she inspires me to embody confidence and to be my own best advocate. Another powerful figure in my life, not too far off from the first, was my grandmother, Jean DeVito. 
She had a faint Brooklyn accent infused with the occasional Italian word here and there. She was a wonderful cook, outgoing, funny, and very Catholic. The only thing she loved more than her own company was her grandkids. She lived in an affordable housing community for seniors for the last decade of her life, and I fondly remember making the 15-minute drive to her place and watching Frasier or Golden Girls on TV with her while snacking on ginger snap cookies or fudgeicles that she bought just for her grandkids. What I admire most about her was her generosity despite having little to give. She donated to church every week and saved so she could buy us Christmas gifts. She was generous in prayer, always telling me she prayed for me while I was away at college and that I was in her heart. And she never came anywhere empty-handed, always with a pan of lemon bars and brownies, or brownies in hand. I think in this way she created a sixth love language, love through food, which she passed down to me. Money was a subject of stress for her throughout her life, growing up poor with two deaf parents, and later working while raising four kids. But through it all, my grandmother gave generously without dwelling on the cost. I see this spirit echoed in my mom, and I try to practice giving too, though at times it can be challenging. I don't know much about life secrets, but my grandma has convinced me a secret to being happy in life is to give. The concluding member of this powerful trio is someone I didn't know until about a year ago. Her name is Eugenia, and she was my host mom when I studied abroad in San Jose, Costa Rica last spring. In my program, we were all individually dropped off at our host family's homes after being picked up from the airport that first day in January. And my host family was Eugenia. She is an older woman with gray hair and a mischievous smile, who, as I came to know, was a great listener and giver of advice. She was also always having guests over for that reason. She spoke no English, so from day one, communication looked different for us. Despite my conversational level of Spanish and helpful Spanish dictionary, some things just got lost in translation. However, Eugenia taught me how to love so that is felt beyond words. She welcomed me into her home, having never hosted a student before, and on top of that, having raised only boys in her life. She made me breakfast and dinner and remembered all of my dietary restrictions, even the annoying ones like not eating raw peppers and onions. She even accommodated her lifestyle to mine, and though it's not so common to eat an early breakfast in Costa Rica, she always woke up to make me breakfast and tea before class, even if one day it was a hamburger at 6 a.m. because... <laughs> because she thought that's what Americans eat. <laughs> At dinner, we would talk about politics, she would tell me gossip about her family, and sometimes she would even share vulnerably about herself and how difficult it was to raise her three boys after her husband left, and how proud she was that she raised a doctor, an architect, and a businessman. I will never forget her efforts to make me feel at home in Costa Rica, and how she managed to show love that transcended our language barrier. I am overwhelmed by gratitude when I think about the role these three women have played in my life, and I encourage you to think about the people in your life that have helped cultivate the person you are today. Sometimes you don't realize the things that influence your actions or mannerisms or language until much later in life, and I'm sure I'll continue to take notice of that effect. For a while, I thought the only thing I got from my mom was my notes. But because of these women, I can tell you about the person I strive to be every day. Like my mom, I invest time and energy into my goals and prioritize them in life, even when it involves late nights and discipline. And like her, I show up for those I care about when I can and let them know what they mean to me. Like my grandma, I never go to any party empty-handed if I can help it, and I also try to give generously without dwelling on the cost, whether it be time, money, or energy to help a friend. And like Eugenia, I'm aware that even the smallest efforts on my part can have a lasting effect on someone else or a stranger going through a difficult time. In life, you can't always choose who shapes your world as you grow into it. But as you begin to claim it for yourself and form your identity, you can always learn from those things, the good and the bad. I was lucky enough to, ex to have experienced a lot of good. Good that I will continue to share 
so that maybe one day I will become a part of someone else's story, shared in their own words. Thank you.